Hi, um, Eagle Spitz here from Punk the Homeless on Desert Island Vids. Our special guest today is Crown Dion. Hello, Crown. What's up? How you doing? How you doing, people? Have uh, well, it's a crazy world. Indeed, it is. Yes, sir. <laughs> it is. I'll let you introduce yourself to our people because some of them have probably not heard what your stuff or what you're about. So I'll let you well, introduce I'll, yourself. I appreciate it. Um, but as uh, Gary said, it, my name is Crown Dion with a K, not a C, but a K. Um, just in case anybody want to look it up. Um, but just another um, artist that I always felt like my voice or people's voices for music is, um, you know, used for uh expressing themselves and and um it comes in all forms poetry rock and roll blues uh rhythm and blues rap soul gospel um and so um i do my best to i actually do my best to blend a lot of them and um do my best to just reach people with a beautiful message that 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 actually god would have us to do our best to influence people with um yeah okay um where are you based at the moment uh, right now, I'm in I'm in Florida, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Yes. Okay. And, um, yeah. So uh, not in Minnesota, but <laughs> even though I'm not in Minnesota, it's like uh, even when I was I was talking to my mom about uh, this this particular interview with you, I was letting her know I was like, yeah, they're in London, but when people they're start not talking, <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, but when people start talking. And uh, communicating, they find out that 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 their interests and their um, things that are going on, they share the same interests, the same struggles that, that are going on in St. Petersburg, Florida. You can easily talk to someone in California, uh, in your country, um, in the next country, wherever poor people are, the same things are going on. And so, uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't, it's not isolated at all. No, no, um, and so, but sometimes it feels as though we're isolated and all. Right, right. Right. Yes. Yeah, things are a bit crazy in your country at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah that for are. good or for bad? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm one of them people that, that kind of easily step outside of myself. And I think to have a good view on things, you have to be able to do that. And so as a revolutionary, I see, I, I can only see the good. I can only see, uh, you know, this is what this is. This is the direction that the country has been probably going. Um, but at the same time, there is a, you know, it's like there is a message, and um, you know, it's no real but. You know, it's hard to what's going on in the street with the protest. The sad thing about it is where it's going politically. You know, uh, you know, a lot of the people that are doing it are actually not the people that. Um, they would get would give credit to or a bash for doing it. In other words, a lot of the black and poor people who are out there trying to express themselves, a lot of them are also getting caught up um, into just drama. And um, that drama is being instigated. And once it's instigated, it's easy to get caught up in. And so what you see on the videotape is you see a lot of people that look like me. But um, it's orchestrated and, and it is made possible by so many other uh, grass grassroots uh, organizations and uh, organizations that have now been called terrorists and, and, and uh, you know, things like that. I think, I think when you weigh out, we are talking about George Floyd, but we're keeping it real. We're not just talking about George Floyd. We're talking about George Floyd and a history of this practice in America. It's been going on forever. And so people are fed up. But now when you take it and you take a step back, if you're being honest, I know some people will want to say, well, forget those other people. No, you can't say we're complaining about George Floyd and then within a few days, 17 or 18 more people are dead. And they didn't come, they didn't die at the hands of the cops. This, I, well, not all of them. All of them didn't die at the hands of the cops this time. So now you have, you know, that's, that's not good either. And so, and, 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 and if people are able to take that and spin it politically, it's hard to say whether it's going to be for the good or for the bad. You know why? Because the people who are buying this, they are so lost and they are so blind. Um, they're so much hatred for Donald Trump. I'm going to just be so much hatred for Donald Trump. 
can actually put us in worse positions sometimes. What we're going to find out is it's going to be hard for us to organize like we're doing right now. This is organization. But this is not, this is something that we've been doing for years, but now all of a sudden they want to shut this down um, and they're doing a good job of shutting down a lot of things um, in the name of trying to shut down this one guy. But then in four years or a few months, this guy gonna be gone. And a lot of the policies that we helped them put in place, we gonna be stuck up under them. And uh, we're gonna find ourselves trying to get from under some other stuff. So it could be good, but at the same time, it could be very bad because um, you used to talk about defunding the police and stuff like that. Um, that's gonna, I understand it, but I also understand that people in my community are gonna pay for that. You know, um, the poor people in my community, they're gonna pay for that. We already got right. problems in the cops to come in our communities. And so when they do come, they come with more violence. And so now it's gonna be, you know, I don't know what to do. So it, it, it remains to be seen though. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, obviously sort of, um, from over the pond here, yeah, we're sort of taking part in the, I hate, I hate to use terms like riots or pro, I mean, I think it's speaking right. out. Right, right. Yeah, with, with everything you've got, speaking out, this isn't right. right. But yeah, we've had, we've had some good responses throughout the UK. In Bristol, um, a statue which belonged to one of the old slave owners. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name offhand, but he's, he's gone where he belongs, at the bottom of the ocean. Right, in the bottom of the ocean, right. I <laughs> totally agree, totally agree. Um, you know, I, I like the fact that um, uh, in Minnesota, they, they, you know, a police department or a police precinct or something was burned. Uh, to the not to the ground, but you know, damaged up and burnt pretty good. And so, you know, that type of that type of thing, you know, you expect, and you actually don't mind seeing it. You know, as somebody said, you know, brick and mortar is not more important than blood. Exactly. But, you know, when at the point when you have, you know, say me and you, you know, and a bunch of comrades, we're on the front line, and then at the point when you have these cowards hiding behind, acting like they're with us. They're not actually with us. They have a whole different uh, agenda that they're pushing politically for somebody else. And so when when things start getting hurled from the back, and somebody hits you in the back of the head, when you're really on the front line for George Floyd, or you really on the front line for uh, Trayvon Martin, Tyron Lewis, you're on the front line for Sandra Bland, and, and, and so many other people, you know, Amar Aubrey, um, so many other people that we actually want to be on that front line for and have that protest and have that 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 given thing that rightful protest i mean um it doesn't do a good service when you got people like that and a lot of the people are getting injured by that and then one time once one bottle get hurled and thrown and somebody get hit in the back of the head all it takes is a little bit of chaos and it causes a lot of chaos and when you have hundreds of people out there i think it's bad you know why i think it's bad because i love to see when people bring their children I love it. Martin Luther King had a chance, and Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. When those patrons, when those uh, uh, those leaders marched, they had people who was willing to bring their children, um, because they understood that they probably didn't understand the political sides of things when the violence did start. But they understood that from their standpoint. This was going to be a nonviolent thing, and we're going to make a statement. So let your ch children also experience this. Now. Uh, it's almost like, yeah, you want your children, you want your kids to involve, uh, be involved and experience it. But at the same time, you're, you're wondering, hmm, who's in control of this? Who's running it? Who organized it? Is it going to get out of control? I, I can honestly say that I was very skeptical about each and every protest that I attended. If it wasn't organized by the right people, um, I didn't go. And, and that's because I, I, I didn't want it to get overtaken by the wrong people. And, and it don't take much, you know, when no. you got some who. I mean, I don't know if you get the same problem, but often we've had demonstrations over here. A lot of trouble is caused by under, under, undercover police officers. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I've, I've heard that a lot. Um, and it, it wouldn't surprise me. I definitely could believe it because um, it would serve the same purpose, and um, it would it would actually serve a more more purpose to say that this is why we need military action, and and and, and they are out of control, and um and and this is why we have to have police ta police tactics, and and that gives them more video to feed the narrative, 
But um, you know, I, I think the rural sees something. It's different. You know, it's um, it's not different. But uh, I, I think when America, uh, we saw Michael Brown, we saw Eric Garner, we just saw a guy killed in New York, uh, all similar to the same way. But it was the the difference was uh, it wasn't a difference. It was it was a, it was a murder. But I think it was different for some people because um, the way the cops they did the murder, but at the same time. Um, it wasn't this murder and then we sit on top of you for another, you know, five, six minutes with disregard with my hands in my pocket. You know, both of them was dirty. Both of them was, you know, downright should have been never happened. But what I'm saying is this guy took it to a whole nother level. This guy was clearly dead. Um, he still had his hands in his pocket. So he wasn't a threat. Obviously, if I'm sitting on you with my hands in my pocket, I'm not worried about you. So his line of saying that this guy was a threat is not uh, accurate. And then you see the cops are the ones that actually picked this guy up. I don't know if you was able to, I don't know if you ever took a minute or anybody for that matter that's watching, if you ever took a minute to watch how this unfold, during this time while this guy on the ground dying or is dead, uh, they're calling somebody and it's not the ambulance. Go back and look at the video. And these are cops that actually picked up um, George Floyd's body. You know, cops pretending to be ambulance. And so that's a problem. And so this was orchestrated and attempted to be cover up. And then we hear that he got fentanyl in the system. Well, he got picked up by cops. Anything could be in the system at this time. I'm surprised. I would be surprised when the uh, autopsy come out, um, if it's not more. The autopsy already came out, but, you know, uh, toxicology and all that took a little longer sometimes. I would be surprised if it's not more. Why did two cops pick this guy's body up off the ground? That means they never... That means they never, ever tried to render assistance. He never got medical attention. He got put in the... He got put in the, I mean, the whole thing is just dirty. And so um, I don't even know how many people, I haven't heard anybody else mention it. And so a lot of people, uh, you go back and look at it and, you, and, you, and you're like, wow, these are not even, these are not even EMT. These are police that are picking this guy up off the ground, this brother, this man up off the ground. And so, you know, the whole thing is just dirty. And, um, you know, the attempted coup, uh, but you can't do it because it was too much cameras. It was too much phone, too many people communicating with you. So this guy was just uh, out of control. But they had so many years of practice doing it. And so he was out of control, but he was so controlled while he was out of control. You understand? I mean, this guy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I mean, because. It's crazy. Aren't these. Is on that a procedure which is actually taught to a police to use? Right. Nailing on somebody's throat. Right. Yeah. Just, so. Although, you know, in my mind, the guy's a murderer. Right. Yeah. He's, 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 trained, he's trained to be a murderer. Right, right. Because yeah, that's, that's only going to yeah. end one way. Right. Yeah, that's only going to end in one way. Yeah. You know, a, a lot, and the saddest thing is you just said some, um, the most, I mean, I think uh, when we, when we kind of uh, individualize things or, you know, putting it in a bigger perspective, you just said it they are trained. And so, you know, we spend a lot of times, you know, trying to paint each, each and every individual. We have no doubt in our mind that this guy was evil. Um, this guy was, you could possibly call him satanic if you want. Um, we ain't got no doubt about that. But these guys are, like you said, trained. So we have to start getting past the, the individual racist people um, that are doing this. And there's a lot of them. Um, but um, as, as, as a, uh, you know, as records would, would kind of prove, you know, it's not as much as we think. It's happening way too much. I mean, if you're sworn to protect, it should never happen. And that's the difference between when they say, well, why people don't complain about black on black or horizontal violence that happens in the community? Well, the difference is we wake up starving. I look at you, I'm hungry. You looking at me, you hungry. There are no jobs in our community. You're an easy target because you don't have no ability to put me in prison. And so we become easy targets amongst each other. The difference is the police are sworn to protect us no matter what we're doing when they come upon us. So when you kill an unarmed man, no matter what color he is, you are held at a much bigger fault and standard, and you should be, than that guy that, you know, maybe committed a crime against somebody else that, uh, and is equal in his own community, um, another poor man. Um, he's not, you know, all he's doing is trying to make a living, but you, on the other hand, you make a living by protecting us. So you can't come out and kill us <laughs> and uh, just using an excuse is, is, is going home to your wife and family. What about us? You know, we all have a right to go home. Yeah, um, Punk for Homeless, we tend to work with street children in Honduras, Mexico, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And 
actually street children are often murdered by the police. You know, our, logo, our motto is stopping cops, killing kids is punk rock. Right. So um, I've been thinking along those lines today. The, uh, it's the same thing, you know, they're right. killing somebody's child. Right. Anyway, yeah. let's, let's have you, you introduced, I'm falling over my words here. <laughs> How's your first song, mate? So, tell us something about your first choice of songs. Um, which 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 one was first? I, I kind of forgot. I think it was a man in the mirror. Okay, well, man in the mirror. I I like the man in the mirror. Um, first of all, I, I always like to go with consistency, and I'm a, I know we got a time frame, so consistency was important. Um, I think Michael Jackson always, you know, when we look at his music, is always a good message. And um, he always felt attacked, so he had messages when, inside of messages. And um, I don't, I can't judge him for all of the things that came out, but the one thing that um, I know is the song Man in the Mirror uh, would tell me that he never thought he was perfect, but the answer to all of our problems, all of our problems, is first in the mirror. And so Man in the Mirror is a song that everybody, and you know, that will be women too for themselves, but, but Man in the Mirror meaning just human. Uh, to start solving anything, um, it starts within yourself. And, 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 and then you can work from within and, and start getting those other things accomplished, uh, whatever you think it may be. So Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror was a powerful song. And it's a song that people be able to look, look back on years and years and years and, and, and be able to say, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm gonna start right here in the man in the mirror and get myself right. Then I can start telling somebody else what to do, how to do it, when to do it, you know, how fast, and which route to take, you know, so. So, man yeah, uh, so folks, you can find that in the links to when this video is going up and it'll be going up on Sunday at five o'clock. So yeah. Sunday the 14th, 1700 hours, British summertime. Um, yeah, Mahatma Gandhi, no, not Mahatma Gandhi, Leo Tolstoy. A famous quote of um, every man wants to change the world, but no right. man wants to change himself. Mm, right. Is... <laughs> wow. That's that. Who was that again? Leo Tolstoy. Wow. That's nice. That's 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 right. And that's definitely what that song would kind of, um, you know, elude to in in, in a, a kind of way where it's it's a hard line to take. You know, sometimes people don't want, like he said. You know, it's the hardest thing to say is uh, you're looking at everybody else, but you're not looking at yourself. And um, even sometimes it's hard to accept when other people might tell you, but that's just the truth. And um, that's where you have to start at. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. For me, I mean, it, it's it's a con it's a constant thing of having to sort of analyze yourself because, right, you know, right. I am. I'm a middle, um, a white male, and that puts me in a pr position of privilege, which I don't want. Uh -huh. But it's actually sort of shaking that baggage off, and right. actually sort of really looking about. I mean, I'm a vegan and stuff. It's like looking at what you do, which affects the world mm. for the poorer. Okay. You know, we should be on looking at ourselves and saying, right. I don't want to be involved in that because they're hurting people. Right, right. And acknowledgement, you know, that's that's um a powerful thing, and and so many people have a problem um with it. But you know, you you just have to you have to erase that. You know, um like you said, you have to acknowledge some before you can get past it, get over it. You know, yeah. I like that man in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your own music. Um, well, uh, as I kind of put in the thing, I'm, I'm like one of my own favorite artists and, <laughs> and not, and not, um, I, I, I really, the funny thing is it's really not because it's me. It's just, uh, I really, really like, I think those things that people say that are, that are important, you know, sometimes I sit through, uh, revolutionary meetings. Um, even if it's, even if it's, um, some that Bruce may have, may have put together, uh, some that the NP Dom or the Huru movement may have done, something that uh, Omari Yesitila could say, um, even other people, uh, the Minister Louis Farrakhan. You have all kind of people that I can sit down and listen to, and I can write a song. And so I think that's what kind of, um, I've never really had any music that tried to fit into the secular industry, uh, the commercial industry. And that's what I probably, that's probably where I separate myself 
um, from a lot of people. Um, you know, maybe money talks. I understand that. And so, um, but for me, I, I always just thought it was special to be able to, like my mom, my mom sings gospel. My sisters, they sing a lot of gospel um, and my auntie. And so I, I was trying to do that same thing, but in rap form, you know, give that gospel message. And I, that's why they hear me say ghetto gospel a lot. Um, and ghetto gospel man, they call me ghetto gospel man, because I believe that gospel uh, is, a, you can use it in any form. Gospel is, is the definition as the good news. And so unfortunately in the ghetto, uh, the news ain't always good. And so I try to bring um, something melodious from a ghetto standpoint and um, with a powerful message without the filth and without the, you know, the message have to go to inspiration and, and uplifting. And so, um, um, and in regards to the song that I chose um, for anybody listening, uh, it's called Think. And I chose that song in particular from 2012 um, because I was li li sitting down listening to some old music because I always cover things like this. And I found it strange, not strange, but ironic that in 2012, when Tyron Lewis got killed, that's who I really made the song behind. And uh, everything that I'm talking about in that song is still happening right now today. And that's the significance behind it. It's like, you know, I named, like, uh, like I said, Tyron Lewis, uh, uh, Trayvon Martin. I named like so many names and there was killed by cops, uh, innocent people, unarmed people, uh, um, all kind of things like that. And so it's ridiculous to, to see what happened uh, to George Floyd, to Amon uh, Aubrey and still see that people can still make a brand new song every day behind uh, murders like that at the hands of people that are sworn to protect us. And so that's where uh, Think came in at. Okay, so that's gonna be in our links, folks. Yeah. Yes. Um, Obviously, sort of, I come from a anarcho Christian punk perspective, if there's such a thing. Mm -hmm. right. I've always seen a lot of similarities between what you guys are saying in the rap or hip hop scene. Right. What the punk scene is saying. You know, it's like we're on the same level. It's like the, yes. the early punk days in the UK, you, know, you used to get Rastafarians like uh, Don Letts. Right. DJing between bands and playing lots and lots of dub and reggae because yes. there was no punk records out when I was <laughs> first getting into the scene. Mm -hmm. And so as punks grew up really listening to a lot of dub and reggae and stuff and something with a strong message. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Totally. Especially when it came to uh, the, the, the blend of... You, that's, that's, you can actually see that in the reggae music as well. That whole blend. You know, a lot of reggae music anyway, especially uh, the great Bob Marley. Well, I yeah, love. I mean, Punky Reggae Party was about the like, punks and rascals. Right. And... Right. Oh. right. So you said you was an activist earlier. Uh, what does that entail? Uh, don't get me? yourself in trouble online. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, nah. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm an activist um, wholeheartedly, you know, um, and I, I do most of it through my music. You know, I, I, I do, you know... Um, I do what I can with my voice to just um, be a leader. And um, a lot of that, I just feel like music is the way to drive the people. You know, uh, when we when we hear so much the, the garbage music that we hear on commercial radio today, um, it's not that our kids and our children love it. It's that it's being beat in their brains, you know, and, and branded in their brains. And so... You know, I think a lot of that starts with us, you know, so um, I don't even play that type of stuff. Anytime somebody around is around me, um, you're probably hearing the same um, music with the same message all the time. That's all I love. And so um, I think you have to be an activist. You have to be willing to do something or you're going to get the same results all the time. You know? Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, yeah. and we're not we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to sort of be passive bystanders in uh, cases right. of injustice and right and the older we get you know we, we accept that a lot more you know if you're at this at this stage and you're still trying to you know make friends or having dreams of, of, of uh you know anything um you know for me anyway it's like uh nah um you're you, you those those come in the form of blessings for me and and those are my rewards um i, I look i look you know a lot of times i look <laughs> gary and i wonder how i how i make it you know, um, um, I don't work, you know, but, but I get, I, I'm just blessed and it just happens every time. I, I don't, you know what I mean? I just got a royalty check. And so I appreciate all the people that are even in tune uh, for the last thing that we did. I, I, I noticed, I noticed that I had 
of new people to come and buy music. I just got a royalty check like two days ago. And so I really thank all of the people who are my new people that are um, in tune and, and, and getting to know me and understanding that, yeah, this guy is real. This is what he does. You know, he's not just making music. That's, that's, um, we have a lot of good artists. Um, and you know, you had a lot of them come out and they do this one piece thing overnight. I'm not going to knock any of them, but that's the difference. It's like, you're a big, you're a major artist and, and, you know, you come out and you do something when it, when it, when something happens and that's not good enough. And, you know, and so consistency, um, and then things like this probably wouldn't have been happening. And so that's my thing. Uh, my passion is to make music, um, from an inspiring level. Um, that's the other reason why I chose Jay-Z, which might be surprising to some people. Um, but, uh, Jay-Z came from the same streets that I come from. Uh, his, his, you know, dope dealing, you know, reputation, you know, the, the stuff that he used to do in drug dealing, taking care of people, poor people in the projects. Um, and, and now able to be in a billionaire position. Um, he's growing and he's growing tremendously. He's not one of them guys that's out there in the front, but the things that he does behind the scenes are the things that make people want to call him um, the devil and Illuminati and things like that. He's being involved in a lot of cases. He's overturning, a, he's getting himself involved in a lot of uh, high profile cases that would surprise a lot of people. And um, you know, even lawsuits against prisons that are doing blacks and poor people wrong. And so the things that I like about Jay-Z are the things that he's using his brand to do. And um, it's a powerful thing and, and, and we, when we need it, it's much needed. Um, um, and I think if people don't know, they can probably look into that because, you know, he get bashed a lot for not doing a lot. But I, I think it's those things that we have to look for sometimes. You know, when they don't want you to see the good in somebody, they make it hard to find it. And so some of those things that we don't see all the time in our faces are, 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 are don't mean it's not there. And some of the things that Jay-Z is using his brand to do within the community is powerful and, and, and it'll go further and, and it'll go further and it'll get bigger because it's touching other young artists that, that are uh, picking it up and learning and, and, and growing from, from that. Excellent. So what was that song? Um, it's called, I got the keys. Uh, and um, you know, uh, it's a, the video is a powerful message. Even if you, even when those go and look at the video, the statement is clear, you know, we are against a system, you know, he has all the inmates on one side and it, uh, nothing but police on the other side and that message is also in the music industry message um um you know it's uh the the, the music industry is robbing a lot of artists artists like yourself and, and artists like me it's like those artists and so he made a, a huge statement not just against the music industry um but against to let us know that we as a people are up against a system that that really needs to win the system needs to win for itself we the people we have to win too but we have to understand that the system is fighting to survive itself. And so it's not going to just let up. It's not going to just uh, give <laughs> us what we're looking for. No, no. It's the fight. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. they're in such a pr privileged position, they're not going to yeah. give an inch unless we take it. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so that's, 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 um, that's my view, and that's why I chose those particular artists. Of course, those was um, hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Artists like Dead Prez, as I mentioned, would have been high up on my list um, because of the red, black, and green that they instituted in, into it. But, you know, consistency is big, and so, um, 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 yeah, that's why I kind of went with those. And, uh, yeah, I had to slide myself up in there. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes, sir. So, um. Thank you for being on Crown. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's an honor. It's an honor. I, I didn't know. It's it's like two thirty five. I know you said thirty minutes. So, um, yeah. Me, me. I'm long winded, and I I really appreciate it. It's and um, anytime I could, you know, um, be a part of anything that you're doing, it's it's, it's always on. Awesome. Sure. Any yeah. any last words you like to put out there? Well, to you, I appreciate you. We appreciate you, the people. And for those protesting and, and uh, fighting with us across the pond, as they say, across the pond, beyond the pond. <laughs> yeah, from beyond the pond. Us, huh? yeah, from man. beyond the pond. From beyond the pond. For those that are with us, man, uh, do it in love. Um, keep it real with yourself. And uh, as somebody said on one of my talk shows uh, or, or interview, um, Sticking to, uh, uh, when you're doing it with consistency, it's not just coming together. Uh, it won't happen if we do it consistently, consistently, 
but it'll continue to happen if we decide to keep just coming together every time it happens. So let's be consistent, do it out of pure love and, 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 and what you would feel. And um, then we can actually do what we're doing and sticking together and overturning this dirty system that, that uh, um, has built itself upon the same things that it's continuing to do. Um, with that, hey, peace, Crown Dion on everything. I Instagram, Facebook, Crown Dion with a K-R-O-W-N-D-E-O-N. Um, support the music. And if you can't support it by purchasing it, you can listen to it free on Reverb Nation. And that's support as well. Friend me and I'll friend you back. Thanks uh, again. Uh, from beyond this pond, Crown Dion and I'm out. <laughs> well, thanks for being on, man. Good, yes, great to chat with you. Keep oh, yeah, up good man. fight, bro. Yep, all day.